that there we go so it went recording in progress yes, i don't it seems to be recorded by the host okay got it so i'm just i've said okay yeah okay okay so hopefully oh yes it says recording in progress good okay uh, so, so 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 yes that's good um okay so um welcome everybody to this um recording for zoom um my name is belinda o'connor from bioptic drivers australia and uh, i'm doing a churchill fellowship to investigate success factors and barriers for low vision and bioptic driving and I am extremely, extremely privileged to be here um, with, with um, um, the man who was the first legally licensed driver in California in 1971. Um, he's in his 80s now and he is still driving today. Um, um, so I will ask you, um, 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 Dennis, please, uh, to... Tell me your story and we will have a conversation about what happened around those days for bioptic driving in general as as well. So um, over over to you, Dr. Dennis uh, uh, Keller. Keller. Yeah, Keller, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the kind words. I'll, I'll try and live up to them. I, I, I may have misheard you. You said I'm in my 80s. Is that what you said? Yes. I'm in my 70s. That's I'm okay. My 70s. I'm no sorry. Problem. Yeah. No problem at all. Sorry uh, to add those years on. <laughs> no, no, no. I just wanted to make sure because they, I was, um, I was born with uh, albinism, which means I have no uh, pigment, and you can see my hair yeah. color I've always been this color. Um, I, I'm wearing my California state hat because I worked for them for 32 years. I love it. I love that hat. So, so, so anyway, um, in 1970, I was offered a job as an itinerant teacher of the visually impaired. And I could not, uh, I could not have done that job without becoming licensed. And I knew that. So when I was uh, in uh, the University of California at Berkeley, and I um, uh, thought, well, uh, I'm a graduate student. I'll have to figure out if I can hire a driver or whatever I can do. And uh, as fate would have it, I did go and take uh, at the School of Optometry at the University of California. I was a graduate student and working on my doctorate in education. Uh, I knew I could not be an eye doctor because obviously I don't have sufficient vision. My vision is about a little bit between 2100 and 2200, and those of you that are familiar with a typical eye chart, uh, the big E is 2200, and then the next line down is 2100. So if you have vision, as many of us do, um, between 2100 and 2200, the doctor has to either let you approach the eye chart, uh, physically walking closer to it, or by having a special chart. And they, they do make such charts that have like 2180, 2160, 2140, 2120 in 20 uh, block instrument. Or you can walk closer. And if I'm, for example, if I'm allowed to walk to 10 feet, then uh, my vision would be recorded as 10 over whatever letters I wrote. In my case, with 2120, I would be recorded as 10 over 60. And if you multiply them uh, to get 20 foot notation, you would simply multiply them by two. So then 2,120. Uh, I, I don't want to get that technical. That's no, just that's the okay. idea yeah. it, that, that um, my vision is not quite good enough. And many people who think, oh, just 2,200, you're legally blind. I've never been legally blind. My vision is stable. I was born with uh, this vision and I'll die with this vision whenever it is. So the bottom line is many, many people who do have low vision, just like me, have a stable eye condition. There are some of us that do not have a stable eye condition and like diabetic retinopathy or um, glaucoma uh, or um something like uh, macular degeneration. There are many different eye conditions and they're all different. Now, someone with, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Belinda, you have a chromatopsia. I do. You, you are stable also. Your correct. vision has always been the same. Born. Yes, so that's see, correct. There are, there are many of us 
that are in this case. And we are very fortunate to say we are the best candidates for getting a license to drive because our vision, we don't wake up one morning and have lost some vision. Yep. As people do who have um, the, uh, uh, the unstable. Age-related macular degeneration. Yes, exactly. Yeah, diabetic retinopathy, cataracts. Yes. All of those um, yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. So um, having said that, I, I uh, came to Berkeley in 1969 and I was working on my doctorate and I saw, because I'd always been interested in uh, eye conditions, I saw a course that uh, was offered at the School of Optometry for non-optometrists, which I knew I wouldn't become one, um, for it was called the history um, and scope of optometry. So I signed up for it. And of course, when I walked in and with my white hair, I wasn't wearing a hat in those days. And the um, doctor of optometry, Dr. Monroe Hirsch, was very kind. And he said, oh, um, you're interested in taking this history course. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, uh, do you know about our low vision clinic? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, well, you might be interested in going to visit and talk with our director Dr. Edwin Mayer. And I said, yes, I'd be very interested because in those days, all I had was a set of binoculars and some magnifiers and that was it. And so I, he set up an appointment for me and I went and Dr. Mayer, the first question out of his mouth is, well, if you could uh, do anything, what is your wish with uh, your vision? What is your wish? And my response was very glib. I said, well, Dr. Mayer, I'm sure you're going to just laugh, and all the students were there too, uh, the young optometry students. And I said, I would like to be able to drive a car, and I expected Ranka's laughter. And it didn't. <laughs> he said, you know, uh, depending upon what your vision is, and he was able to observe me and whatever. Uh, he said you would have to meet certain criteria, but there's a man in. Um, New York, who's developed something called the Bioptic Telescope. That was Dr. Um, William Feinblum. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting. I grew up in New Jersey, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, I, I never heard of this. <laughs> and so he said, well, who was your doctor? And I said, well, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Um, Gerald Fonda. And he said, well, that explains it. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Fonda was a, um, an optometrist who did not like uh, optometrist. Uh, Dr. Fonda was an ophthalmologist, I'm sorry, who yep. didn't like optometrists. And um, he thought Dr. Fonda was uh, uh, a person who was making, um, you know, yep. promises that he couldn't keep and whatever. Dr. Feinblum, yes. Dr. Feinblum. Yep. Dr. Feinblum was a genius. He, he, dealt, he made, he developed uh, a use uh, with lenses. He used a Galilean telescope that uh, I don't know if I can show it. I don't know. Uh, can can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can. Wow. Uh, yep. And so uh, this is what it looks like. Yep. And it does attract attention. People have said to me, oh, I would never wear that. And I said, if I can drive a car legally and do it safely and wear this, I'll wear anything. Let me yep. have it. The I'm other thing... Fan. That, that's important. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm just agreeing with you. Okay. And here is something. These are uh, I've the seen those. insert. Yep. Okay. Because in my case with albinism, I'm very light sensitive. And so to have a sunglass and regular sunglasses will work because all the glare will come from around. These wrap around. I, I don't know. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that I've got yep, this. we can. Uh, and I've got photos of that in other blogs. So, so I have okay, seen that. Okay, perfect. And this is how I generally drive. Um, you know, obviously, if it's raining or dark, I not use the sunglass inserts, but otherwise I have bioptics. Uh, that, uh, and that is, uh, and I can explain later, uh, they only prescribe one, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Dr. Mayer said, yes, there's a man, uh, William Feinblum, and he has a company. It's called Designs for Vision, and they make special lenses. And he showed it to me, and he said, you may have seen these. Many dentists wear them, but they're different. They go on the bottom because they're giving them uh, a telescopic view of someone's 
uh, and, you know, back in their eye and they, they, they or surgeons who are, you probably wouldn't see surgeons wear them, but um, bioptics are, and that was their main part of their business. And they simply took the lens, a uh, telescopic lens, and put it in the top of the lens so that it would uh, enable people to uh, use their distance vision instead of uh, near vision. And a man by the name of Dr. Donald Korb in Massachusetts in 1970 published an article. And Dr. Mayer gave me that article and said, you go home and read this. And uh, let's see, um, you know, what we're going to, we're going to, uh, conduct a, a low vision evaluation of you, and we're going to see. And he said to me, uh, with a three power bioptic, you will get 2040 vision. And that's what the, the screening standard is for the state of California. Well, I said, Will I let me drive with this? And he said, I don't know. That's going to be something that you and I are going to work with them on. I wrote a letter to DMV, and I wrote it on letterhead of the University of California School of Optometry uh, with Dr. Mayer's help. And I explained to DMV that uh, I had low vision, it was stable, um, uh, here was my vision, and my goal was I would like to be able to drive, and there were other states, namely at that time, New York and Massachusetts, that uh, would license people if they went through a specific evaluation. And so at the to my happy surprise, a gentleman by the name of um, Dr. Uh, Donald McDonald, who, and all these people, uh, Dr. Mara has passed away, Dr. Hurst has passed away, a doctor, many, many people that I dealt with because I was 24 years old, now I'm 76. So this was a long time ago. In any case, Dr. McDonald worked for the Department of uh, Motor Vehicles. He was in charge of something called the Driver improvement division. And those were for people who had all kinds of disabilities. And he said, I don't know anything about these, but obviously you must be a pretty bright guy because you in Berkeley and that's a good school. And I'm familiar with the school of optometry. And so he and I and Dr. Mayer met at DMV and he said, well, let's see what you can do with the things And I got up and I read the DMV chart, which it has 24 letters on it. And he said, well, you, no problem with that. And uh, he asked Dr. Mayer a bunch of other questions. And he said, well, let's uh, go for a little ride. And I had a new car. I had a, um, a car. Dr. Mayer always said to me, I was an eternal optimist because <laughs> I bought my car before I had a license. He said, well, what would you I done? I did too. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And so uh, I, I was hoping that I would, um, in any case, he said, I'm just going to take you around the block. And um I, it was a stick because I, I knew how to drive a, a stick. I wanted to learn how to drive a manual transmission because I felt no matter what kind of vehicle I um, came in contact with, I would have the ability to drive a, a car that had a clutch. And um, I did apparently very well. Uh, Dr. Mayer was in the back seat. Uh, they were both quiet. Um, I would come to a stop sign and stop. I would signal. I would look both ways and drive. And um, yes, I must confess that I did some driving illegally in New Jersey when <laughs> I was a young kid. Yeah. Uh, some of my friends said, well, you can, you can see well enough to drive. You, you see that person down there? And I said, yeah, but I can't see what color eyes they have. And mm -hmm. he said, you don't need to see here. You just need to know that there's a person in the crosswalk or whatever. And exactly. so uh, that was one of my very good friends. And, um, you know, in any case, I had a little bit of practice. And so they said to me, fine. Um, uh, you can, you can get a, a learner's permit. I found my, my, uh, one of, I wasn't my, one of the secretaries in the school of, of, um, education where I was a graduate student, her husband was a driver instructor for FBI agents. And he said, sure, I'll be glad to take you out. Now I learned to drive in Berkeley and Oakland. Those are big cities. And it's like, I was scared to death. And he said, no problem. We're going to take you to a place where it's pretty quiet and around a man-made lake uh, in Berkeley. I don't even remember what the name of it was, but I learned how to do speed control and shifting and all this kind of stuff there. And then he said, okay, I think you're ready to go out on the streets. And we went on certain streets and make a long story short, I practiced with him 
um, daily for about a month to two. Then uh, he said, I think you're ready. And he took me down to DMV in Oakland, where uh, we met uh, uh, Dr. Donald McDonald again from the DMV. And he said, OK. And he took me on quite a tour of, uh, of downtown of the city of Oakland. Um, I wouldn't even like driving there today. You know, even though I've, I've got 50 years of driving experience. It was very, um, you know, I was scared to death. The only uh, complaint he had, he said, well, you average 17 miles an hour. Uh, he had me out for about 40 minutes. And we went on. And he said, the average speed in here is 25. And I said, yes, sir, but isn't it true that the average speed is 25? Then I went out and exceed the speed limit. And he was very impressed with that response. He said, yes. And I said, also, if you take into consideration, that, you know, when you come to a red light, you know, you're not moving at all. So mm -hmm. anyway, long story short, he said, OK, I'm going to I'm going to issue you a license um, and we're going to give it to you for uh, usually licenses were issued in California at that time for four years. He gave me a license for two years. Yeah. And then I was able to come to Yolo County, where I live today. Woodland is a suburb of of um, Sacramento. And it's uh, an area where there was always agriculture. So it was an easy place to drive. I will mm -hmm. not. You know, I mean, it's not like I had to drive in downtown Sacramento and I did very well and then no problems. And I was able to actually be an itinerant teacher and go from one school to the other because we didn't move the students and put them all together. We yeah. integrated them in the regular school. So I had that job uh, for four years and I went back after two years and I uh, took my retest at the DMV office in Woodland, a very nice man. And uh, he took me, uh, I have to take a written test. I have to take an eye test. And at that time, that's all I had to do was read the DMV charts. And uh, now it's a little different, and I'll go into that later. Um, and I have to write, I have to be um, a, I have to take a road test just to show the man. He was young, much, I don't think he was much older than me. I was about 25 at the time. And he was very good. And he said, hey, um, you know, I knew you were coming because uh, I had called Dr. McDonald to say, what do I do? Do I have to come to Sacramento or go to Oakland or something and do something special and go through a driver improvement analyst? He said, no, I'm going to just send you to a regular driver license examiner at the field at a, your local field office. And so he explained to this gentleman, uh, this is a guy that, um, you know, is the, driving with a new device. And um, I got my license renewed. And so as of 1973, um, they said, you know, we probably need to get some guidelines. This was the MV. And um, in 1975, I was um, uh, invited to become uh, a member of a newly formed optometric advisory board, actually driver license vision, vision <clears throat> uh, standards to develop a procedure to license people with bioptics. And basically what they said is we want to be sure that they meet certain criteria, that they have a stable eye condition, that they have um, uh, 2040 through the bioptic, that they have demonstrated uh, that they can actually uh, drive uh, safely, uh, that they can spot things. Um, I'm not going over all the particulars because- um, No, that, that's fine, yeah. But the bottom line is uh, we developed some uh, uh, some procedures. One of the most important procedures we developed is a new form. It's called a driver license six, form 62. And that is um, for anyone that doesn't meet the regular criteria for driving, <clears throat> that um, they take that to their eye doctor and the eye doctor fills it out and it asks all kinds of questions like, is this a stable condition? What is their acuity? Un yep. And I'll, I'll put that on the website. Right. Yeah, it's still right. used that, today. And so they'll they'll see they'll see that. We yep. were the first ones. They have since 
revised it, but it, it measures your visual fields and your peripheral yeah. vision because actually your peripheral vision is far more important than your central acuity. And I have normal peripheral vision. So the bottom line is in 75, we actually um, uh, had other people that were being licensed to drive with using with a bioptic. Now today I'm told there's somewhere around five to 600. They really don't know because the reason is, I know that's rather strange to say, they don't know the exact number because many people move out of state, uh, they um, retire, and uh, they don't want their license anymore or whatever. And so um, some people uh, get licensed with a bioptic today, and then tomorrow somebody who had a bioptic license uh, you know, retires or dies. And, and so they don't have an exact number, which is, but, yeah. nor, nor do they have an exact number of how many licensed drivers we have in California. Yeah. Number is somewhere around 25 million. <laughs> so, yeah. But there aren't many people with bio, driving with bioptics at this point in the state of California, but they can't tell me an exact number. Yeah. So, and in fact, anyway, that's probably a product because many people can drive as low vision um, yes. Yeah, and and we don't need to talk about that in depth. I'm just more interested in your okay. your story in terms of um, bioptic driving and um and the and what happened going forward. Yeah. Sure. Well, I, that's pretty much my story, uh, okay. uh, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> no. No. Fantastic. So so so, so Dennis um. Um, there's been a lot of controversy around bioptic driving and um, obviously at a period of time um, um, when you were getting your license, um, there were um, there's there's different research that's been done over time and as you say, various people who objected to bioptic driving. Yes. Um, um, it'd be great if you could explain um, what your knowledge is of those circumstances over the years. Certainly. Um, the main thing is that they uh, they were uh, uh, people who they weren't aware of how you use a bioptic. First of all, they said, well, gee, um, a, a telescopic lens like a bioptic uh, is going to cut down the amount of the amount of visual field that you see at one time. Now, this is the three power bioptic. And I yeah. believe um, I don't remember this expanded field. Uh, something like it's 12 degrees, 10 degrees. I don't remember exactly. It's immaterial. You don't drive using the bioptic looking through the, the actual telescope all the time. In fact, that would be very dangerous and you couldn't drive with it very well and you'd be driving with tunnel vision. That's yeah. why they don't allow people with, um, let's say, retinitis pigmentosa or something like that, that yeah. they have a, a constricted field and, you know, Peripheral vision is far more important in driving yeah. than it is, uh, as I said, with the, the 2020 vision. So clearly, that's the first thing. They don't understand how a bioptic would be used. You obviously, And you can change your fixation very quickly. Correct. You can go through the telescope and the carrier lens. The carrier lens, you have to have a certain amount of vision or else a three power or even a four power lens won't do you, uh, it, you won't get you to the 2020 to 2040 uh, screening standard that California has. Yeah. So uh, that's the second thing. The third thing is that the telescope, no matter how you make it, it's always going to have a little bit of a scotoma, in other words, yeah. a little blind spot. It's circular. Yeah. Okay. And they said, oh, well, gee, things will get lost in the scotoma. That's virtually impossible. Yeah. And yeah. I, my response to that is, look, you drive with blind spots in your car or your truck mm -hmm. all the time because you have supports for your uh, windshield in the front. And, you know, that's a blind spot and never bothers you. I mean, something coming from either side, technically you could say, oh, it's impossible to get that vehicle that's coming perpendicular to you to stay in that scotoma that all of a sudden you don't see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Clearly, you use your peripheral vision, and it, even if it's in the scotoma, as you go forward, the, the item is going to get bigger eventually, even if they had the exact speed they needed to keep it, you know, um, hidden, you couldn't do it because it's going to, as it approaches you, it's going to get larger 
and sub 10 to bit a larger visual angle. Yeah. And so and, 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 and lots of these are all just academic arguments without yes, ma'am. Um, True. research and and so um um you were telling me that all of these these things were were presented by people who opposed bioptic driving there Correct. was a conference done in in new in um washington or new jersey and washington dc washington 1975 and and 76 um we've only got about seven minutes left so so how about you run me through with what what happened there all right. and, and after just just quickly and what I'll do is I'll put on the website links to the uh, relevant documents as well 75 was the DMV in New York they had already licensed the people because of Bill Feinblum and so that uh, went fine there were people that were on both sides of it and uh, we had a, a healthy uh, dialogue we didn't convince them the people who still opposed it, Dr. Keeney, Dr. Fonda, uh, Otto Lippmann, Dr. Hellinger, they wanted to have uh, another conference. So they did, the American Association of Motor Vehicles uh, Administrators, AAMVA, paid for it. A number of us came down uh, to from different places and um, we did the same thing, the debate and listening and what have you. Uh, unfortunately, we all got together for a breakfast after the meeting was over, uh, and there was some discussion to hammer out the recommendations, and the recommendations that we agreed to or thought we agreed to at the breakfast was not what came out in the publication. Uh, Dr. Arthur Keeney, who was in charge of the ophthalmologist, was absolutely adamantly opposed, and uh, he had a lot of power, and no one suspected but uh, he had a, a scribe by the name of Lee Hames who put together the, the um, proceedings and it was published and it was published with uh, uh, things that said basically, well, you can't drive with it. We don't recommend any state licensed people with bioptics unless they can pass the eye uh, screening standard uh, without a bioptic, which is yeah. absurd. There's no yeah. such thing. Why would you work with? So, and we, uh, those of us, uh, said that's we didn't agree with that mm -hmm. so consequently in uh, 1982 the american optometric association put together a paper i believe you said you were going to i've got that, that and i'll put it on on the website yeah they, great and they and they answered they refuted the answers and said basically this is not what was agreed to mm -hmm. <laughs> and the long story short is aamva lost the battle in the long run because now i believe um uh, and Belinda, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. I thought there were 37 states that allowed bi driving with bioptics. You're saying there's 48 now. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so these days now, 48 um, states allow bioptic driving in some way. Perfect. Um, and the other two states allow low vision driving without the bioptic. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Then. So, so, so that that's an interesting um, story. And and what's even interesting is that is that Dr. Fonda, who opposed bioptics, was your childhood ophthalmologist. And, and what did he say to you? <laughs> he said, Dennis, you're one in a million. And I said, no, Dr. Fonda, I'm not one in a million. I'm just an ordinary guy. Yes, I yeah. wanted to drive a lot. I had a need to drive. And that's one of the th things that, that I'm glad you're going to put the, the, the presentation I made at Scapin's Eye Institute because that, that, I will. that, that is a, I think it has a lot of good information for anyone. That's okay. And so, and so Dennis is talking about, well, actually there's two presentations I'm going to put on, on the public uh, website. So one is done by Dr. David Hennessy from the Department of Motor Vehicle Research Branch that talks about um, research that was done in 1983 and 96 about us, uh, how statistically it's um, something like that shouldn't be done for bioptic drivers as a group, as a whole, because it um, is considered to be an amalgamation error and you wouldn't do that kind of research for, say, people using hand controls or a wheelchair or or joysticks, et cetera, um, and that you need to look at subgroups and he explains that. Um, so I'll put that presentation on on our um, um blog and also website but also the presentation that Dennis is talking about as as well um so Dennis we've only got about three three minutes left okay um, 
Um, is, is there anything in that you'd like to talk about in terms of um, anything to do with low vision, bioptic driving, et cetera? Um, the, the only thing I want to say is I'll, I think a lot of the people who oppose uh, people driving with bioptics, um, it, it's, I don't think it's malicious. I think it's out yeah. of ignorance, basically. They I don't agree. understand and they think, my gosh, I think there's a sense of fairness here that uh, is, is not imposed. Everybody, um, I shouldn't say everybody, most people don't uh, have any problems with people that are paraplegics or even quadriplegics driving with all kinds of hand controls and whatever. They never, never question it. Uh, same thing with people who are totally deaf. Oh, that's okay. They can drive. And yet we all know that your, your hand controls and listening uh, to, um, you know, horns blowing and that kind of thing. That's all important. There are all kinds of things. I think people don't understand that you don't see just with your eyes. You see with your right. eyes and your brain. Yeah. If your brain is sharp and interprets things, and that's the problem. If they remember nothing else, that's my big thing. That people all about functional oh, functional vision. So so driving is not about um, um, what you see. It's actually how you interpret and what you do. With how you use you the see. vision that you have. That's exactly yes. right. That's, how you functionally use it for the driving tasks that differs from everyday precisely. other tasks. And some people are better at it. And some yes. and, and people and, with twenty one hundred vision and you know. Some people act like they're totally, almost like they're blind. And other people with 2100, you wouldn't even know that they have a visual impairment. Absolutely. So there you go. So Dennis, um, we've we've run out of time. Um, yes. and, and what I wanted to do now is just thank you so much for imparting your knowledge and the history um, of bioptic driving over time and, and your part. And I'll also reference that that Dennis has, has written many papers and I'll include references to those as well. Um, and and um, um, I really appreciate you coming on the Zoom call and and um, and everything you've done for bioptic driving in California, but also um, it helps us everywhere around the world. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the kind words. I appreciate it. And thank you for getting in touch with me. I, I hope that I wish you well in uh, Australia, and thank you for doing what you're doing. So you've turned things around on an entire continent. <laughs> That's good to know. So uh, yeah. keep up the good work and, and good luck with your future and your fellowship. And if I can do anything else, I'm going to send you the full proceedings when I go to my home. Lovely. Uh, and and uh, that will be in two weeks because I'm okay. going to go to my second home, get the booklet because I know exactly where it is. Bring it home, scan it here, and I'll put it 